Hey YouTube, what's good? My name's Chris, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I've got an extensive Vanguard latency, FPS, and visibility guide for you guys. I'm gonna break down the game, I'm gonna test frames, I'm gonna test latency and visibility for each individual setting. Now, just a heads up guys, this engine is a little bit weird. It's the same engine as the Modern Warfare engine. There is a lot of latency in this engine, just like Modern Warfare. I don't know if it's because of DirectX 12, honestly. I really don't know what it is, but it's a lot higher latency in general compared to your normal other titles like DirectX 11. We're talking like 15 milliseconds more latency on top just because of the actual game engine. So it is what it is. The best thing that you can do for this game, max absolute frames make a huge difference, more so than other games because of the way that the game engine is and because of how kind of laggy the, the game engine actually is. So hopefully, eventually, they might actually optimize this, but at this stage, it just is what it is. Now, if you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and like because it'll help me out a lot. I do these kinds of videos with all sorts of other games and I'm planning to in the future as well. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and hopefully I can help you out. Now, before I continue on with the video, I have to show you guys this. This is really, really important. The things that make the biggest difference to your frames and low latency on your computer is setting everything up properly and hardware. They make up the biggest things. You can only do so much with the game, guys. I have an optimization pack for you guys to follow, so I don't have to include those things in this video. And it's basically a teardown. If you are uncomfortable with upgrading your hardware at all, or if you're uncomfortable with overclocking your graphics card, CPU, or memory, that's fine. If you're uncomfortable with doing a fresh install, that's fine. Just at least follow this video so you apply the things that actually really matter and you set everything up right. Even if you don't want to sort of like redo anything or overclock anything, that's fine. So a couple of things I'm going to mention here right now are the things that really make the biggest difference. Uh, it kind of sums up this whole pack and the things that actually matter because I've tested all of these things. Really good RAM speed making sure XMP is on. You can overclock if you like. A good CPU, overclocking your CPU to get a little bit more out of it. A good graphics card and overclocking your graphics card if you're comfortable with doing that. This game engine for some reason prefers AMD graphics cards. I'm not sure why. I just made the switch. I sold my 3090 and I went to a 6900 XT. If you guys go see my Twitter post, I'm literally getting an extra 150 FPS in Modern Warfare, same engine as this game, just from going AMD. I'm not sure why that is. I don't know what our NVIDIA are doing. Uh, I got pretty much the same friends on my 2080 Ti as my 3090. So I've just made the switch to AMD because I mainly play COD at the moment and that's what I care about. Um, stability with hardware, which is what really matters. No faults, unstable overclocks or overheating. A fresh Windows install always helps, especially if things have gone a little bit sour power plan, timer resolution, your graphics driver, updating that and the right settings for that, minimal background processes, a mouse with low delay and a decent polling rate, at least a thousand, a controller with low delay, usually PS4 or PS5 and overclock that to a thousand hertz. You really can't do that with other controllers, unfortunately. A keyboard with low delay and a monitor with low delay. They're the things that really, really matter. All the things from all the other videos don't really matter so much. Obviously setting up your game properly with the optimal game settings, but there's a lot of placebo that gets over on the internet. So I try to cut that down and that's why I've made this pack because I've gone ahead and tested everything. I spent about two months on Twitch with my latency tool, testing benchmarks, uh, CPU, GPU, and throughput latency. I had 1% since 0 0.1, so I spent a little time on that. Anyway, let's get to optimizing this game. Now, I really appreciate um, Battle.net and their game launcher. You don't really need to do anything here. If you like to leave the game launcher open, please go ahead and turn off, use browser hardware acceleration, but I'd highly recommend going to on game launch, exit Battle.net completely. It's really nice. It doesn't have to run in the background at all. Really recommend that. As far as anything else, it's not really worth touching anything else in here because when you boot the game, Battle.net closes completely up. So that's fine there. Now, another thing I'm assuming you guys have already installed and played the game. So go to your documents folder, go to Call of Duty Vanguard Public Beta, which is gonna be the same. And something I will mention just really, really quickly, I'm doing the video on the beta. I'm gonna test on the actual release of the game. And if anything changes, I'll let you know, guys know and do an updated video. But I'm gonna say probably not much will change. It'll probably be much the same. And even if it is the same, I'll release another video just saying it's the same. Go to advancedoptions.ini, okay? Just click edit here. If you guys don't have Notepad Plus Plus, we're just gonna use, um, you know, normal notepad. Okay, go ahead and scroll down and look for render worker count. Now we need to change this because I don't know why it's the same as the Modern Warfare engine. The game sets it wrong. What I want you to do is press Control, Shift, Escape. Just go to Task Manager. I want you to go to Performance. I want you to go to CPU. Go ahead and look at Cores. Don't look at Processes, which is the threads. 
okay? Look at actual cores. You need to set it to half this value. Tested this on a lot of hardware. There's been a lot of recommendations getting around. It seems it's always best on this game engine. I don't know why it's setting it to half your cores, just the way that it works. So 16, half of 16 is eight. I've already set that there. By default, the game set it to 16. It runs worse, uh, slightly worse frames and lower 1% and 0.1s. Just set it to half your cores. Now it's nice we don't have an encrypted config like Modern Warfare. Uh, you can't really change anything extra in here that the game won't let you, uh, aside from one or two things. So you're better off just changing everything in the game. There's no point mucking around with a config here. I will show you something that is a little bit annoying, guys. There is actually forced film grain with this game, okay? And as you can see here, it's at 0 0.25. Okay, I'll just zoom in a little bit, as you can see. If you set this to 0, it sets it back to 0 0.25. If you set this to 0 and set it to read only, it still doesn't work. So there's forced film grain in the game. And unfortunately, guys, there's forced anti-aliasing this game and there's absolutely no way to turn it off. I'd recommend a sharpening filter. I'll cover that very, very soon. You can do that for AMD or NVIDIA, um, but that's going to help out quite a lot. Now, if you don't have the greatest AMD card, you can look at... There's a little option here, which is basically you can use the AMD Super Resolution um, quality. So that to max quality, if it isn't already. So you can just go ahead and, um, well, I would say that's a maximum performance for you guys if you wanted the most of the most. So you can go ahead and put this as maximum performance and AMD Super Resolution. So you need to have this on for this to work and you just select this, copy and paste. Um, I know a few people have got quite a nice little boost out of this. Um, for me, uh, my 6900 XT, it's already such a good card. This doesn't help frames at all for me. It makes the game look worse, each to their own, but it's worth trying out. If you have an NVIDIA card, um, DLSS might actually help a little bit too. It's worth checking out. But it's worth noting using AMD DL uh, NVIDIA DLS or this AMD feature, you will lose uh, quality, so visuals aren't as nice. So that's just worth noting, but it's worth testing out. Those are really the only things that you can change in the config, the render count, and then this. Um, everything else basically gets changed in the game. I've tried different values that aren't sort of like supported, like, you know, off, you know, it just doesn't work. You kind of locked out, so it is what it is. We go ahead and we change everything in the game. So once you've changed your render work count to half your cores, make sure you click file and save. That's really important, that step, okay? Now I wanna to talk to you guys about a sharpening uh, feature. So now I'm on AMD, I can actually show you guys this and for NVIDIA, I'll get up a little screenshot to show you guys what to do. Now I've tested this on AMD, which is absolutely fantastic. There's no FPS loss at all like at all having sharpening filter on. So just go ahead. You can do it by game basis if you don't want it for every game. I've got the minimal driver installed here, so I can't do that. So I have to kind of put it on globally for everything. Go read in image sharpening, turn that on into 100%. It's really needed with this game, especially if your monitor doesn't have many sharpening features like my Dell 360 monitor. This will help a lot and it doesn't, uh, you don't lose any frames. Now with NVIDIA, you do lose a few frames, unfortunately. In my tests in Modern Warfare multiplayer, lost about 10 frames in Warzone, five frames, but it was worth the visual quality, the way this game engine works. It's just a little bit blurry out of the box. I'll show you guys how to apply that for NVIDIA. Just know it will tax your frames a tiny little bit, but it's worth the visual quality on NVIDIA, but not on AMD. Now, apologies about the bad quality, but just go into your NVIDIA driver settings, select uh, per game in the manage 3D settings, okay? Um, where you can manually manage them. Go ahead and throw an image sharpening on, okay? And go set it to um, on. And I'd recommend for uh, this game, I would set it at 0 0.5 and ignore film grain anywhere between uh, 0 0.1 and 0 0.17. That's the recommended value. If you go too far on the sharpening with NVIDIA, it actually makes the image look a hell of a lot worse. Um, it, it kind of behaves differently uh, versus the AMD sharpening. The AMD sharpening, I can have it at 100% and it looks fantastic. With NVIDIA, if I, I bump it up too much, everything just looks really, really grainy no matter what I do. So I'd recommend 0 0.5 and 0 0.17 and maybe slowly start to bump down the ignore frame gain and see how you go. Now, the way this game engine works with AMD, it's fine. You can add a sharpening filter after you've loaded the shaders and it's fine. With uh, NVIDIA, it bugs out. So what you have to do is install a new driver or install a different driver, 
okay then it apply the image sharpening first before you initially open the game this stage is really important with nvidia you don't have to do that with amd because with nvidia if you have already opened the game and initially loaded the shaders on that specific driver that you're on then exit the game then apply this you kind of get this weird shader bug where everything just looks absolutely horrible so just something to mention so if you have problems with this install a new driver or a different driver before you boot up the game apply this first Right now we're in the game, um, I'll quickly show you the settings that we're going to start off with as a base. Um, it's probably going to be best case scenario. So there's not too much you can do. I just recommendations, I guess, interface. If you scroll down here, there's something called, if I can find it, cross crosshair bobbing. Yeah, turn that off. That's just not cool. That shouldn't even be in the game at all. Um, and another thing that I'd like to show you guys, camera movement. I would turn that all the way down. It's got to do with camera shake. I definitely don't recommend um, having that. All the way cranked up just turn all that all the way down but we'll go over the graphic settings um that we're kind of going to start with um in my recommendations i guess kind of recommendations because you're going to want to crank some things up but we're going to test that very very shortly make sure you're always in full screen never game in borderless or windowed mode that's really important make sure you refresh set your refresh rate frame rate i'm going to be testing with unlimited but if you get a really inconsistent, unsmooth experience, you may want to look at capping FPS for it to be more stable. Now, NVIDIA Reflex are low latency. I recommend setting this to enable plus boost for you guys that are on NVIDIA cards. It does make a difference. It helps definitely with this game engine. Um, highly recommended. With AMD, it gets a little bit more complicated. Okay, with AMD, there is Radeon anti-lag. And I'll talk about that right now before we go to the rest of the settings. I need you to use something like an overlay. This is FPS mod. You can just download it. It's free. You need to see your GPU usage. And as you can see here, and go play an actual match. Radeon anti-lag causes a lot of people like issues and hitches. Don't use this unless you're over 97% GPU usage. If you play this game, you set everything up perfectly. Go ahead and play a few games with this on. See your GPU usage. If you're hitting over 97% GPU usage, I recommend trying out our Radeon anti-lag just in case. Um, it, it would help your latency just a little bit. Um, but if you're under that, I've, I've noticed a lot of people have had issues with it on. So if you're under 97%, it's fine. You can leave it off. Either way, NVIDIA is fine. NVIDIA can just leave it on completely. That's no problem at all. It should be on regardless for um, NVIDIA completely. All right, so I'll go show you guys how you turn on Ra Radeon anti-lag. Let's go into the driver settings. You go ahead and switch this on, but like I said, I really don't recommend it unless you're hitting 97% GPU usage and above. That's when you have that input lag issue um, with the CPU basically waiting for the GPU to finish with rendering. Um, like the queues, it's basically the dumbed down version of it. But um, so if you've got a really good card, I'd probably say leave this off. If you've got a really low end AMD card, uh, you know, you probably want to try it enabled. If it feels a little bit smoother, you'll notice. I'll leave it on for that specific game. The other thing I also want to mention, NVIDIA filters, they create quite a lot of input lag because you lose quite a few frames with using NVIDIA filters. Uh, Activision just tweeted out that, that they've unlocked, or well, the game developer team tweeted out, tweeted out they've just unlocked NVIDIA filters for you to be able to use. I highly recommend not using them. I recommend using a sharpening, right, which is what I've done here. And I recommend setting up your digital vibrance all the way up for the game because the game does look a little bit um, sort of dull. Now you can do the same on NVIDIA. I've showed you guys how to do the sharpening on NVIDIA. And with NVIDIA in the sub menu where you can set your colors, just go ahead and set the uh, saturation all the way up for this specific game. You don't lose any frames doing it this way like filters because filters uh, from my tests, it was about 70 FPS loss with a really, really good card in a multiplayer sort of a match um like you know with my nvidia card and a 70 fps loss is quite a lot in input lag in terms especially with this game because there's already a lot of input lag in this game engine so guys don't use nvidia filters please just use sharpening in the driver and use um saturation in the driver regardless of whether you're on amd or on nvidia now field of view personal preference i've got it cranked all the way up i will be testing lower field of view and higher field of view see if that affects frames on first build of modern warfare if you had low, lower uh, higher field of view you would have more fps and then on the later builds it's kind of the other way around believe it or not but we'll be testing that okay definitely turn these off we don't want any sort of blur or anything like that color customization guys i really recommend trying this out for your hard color palette you can see enemies a little bit better it's not an optimum it's not a fps or latency optimization but it helped me quite a little bit Call 
quality. For this test, we're going to start with absolutely everything low. And I can tell you guys right now, it's going to be the same as when I tested Warzone Modern Warfare. Uh, if you don't have the greatest card, bumping down render resolution helps a lot as far as frames and input lag, just because the way this engine is. So at the moment, we're going to be rendering, this is 1080p at 66% render res, which is 720p. We're going to be testing sort of best case scenario here. Everything completely low. They do have presets, so I'm going to test each individual setting here and find out what affects frames the most and it will scale very very similar no matter what card you're on even if you're on a potato card now guys with my tests obviously it's going to be best case scenario with best case uh, hardware you guys have got to understand that you know you guys could have a much lower end graphics card and some of these settings will affect it even more as far as frames and even more as far as latency which is fine but you guys will be able to see best case scenario on best hardware how it scales and it will scale similarly on lower end hardware it might tax it more so but at least you can see a difference on the settings that make the biggest difference and the biggest hit to fps if that makes sense so it's always going to be a hardware basis right so some of you guys might not have a very good card but you guys will be able to see how it scales and keep note on what settings to probably avoid putting on and what game settings to put on or what game settings you might want to put on for visibility etc etc so i think i've just about covered everything we're starting with everything absolutely very very low like I said, unfortunately, anti-aliasing is forced on with this game. This game does look incredibly horrible. Uh, if you want the best sort of visibility, unfortunately, you kind of need to have filmic strength on max and you need to have filmic SMA on two times. And the reason why I'll show you is because you guys might not be able to see this on here, but if we go to weapons, okay, uh, there is, see how that looks kind of clean? On the gun there just have a look at a bit of the gun hopefully youtube can pick this up so there's a lot of added blur with this setting it's kind of like a trade-off you'll see what i mean in a sec right so if i turn that um off completely you'll see see how it's kind of looking all like filmy and grainy um so at this stage if you're not using that one you might as well turn filmic strength off completely right it still looks like really grainy and, and blurry right and say you turn this back on which is kind of probably what you want for visibility. We're going to test both. It's still grainy. So you need to have this on for filmic, right? So it's a trade-off because playing an actual match, this SMAA two times looks a lot better and a lot clearer because it's less blurry, but there's a lot of visual glitches with this. So you kind of want to go with that if you don't want the visual glitches. Hopefully the game developers actually let this us disable this properly. We'll have to see what happens. It's I found this with Battlefield 5 guys. They they forced on anti-aliasing with that game because the the game was unpolished and unfinished and uh, anti-aliasing hides a lot of bugs um, and a lot of glitches. And I really think that's why they haven't allowed us to switch that off here. I, I think this has been quite rushed and they don't want to allow us to switch that off because we'll be able to see a, a lot of like visual glitches. But anyway, regardless, I'm kind of carrying on. Pretty sure I covered what we're going to be testing. So I'm going to go ahead and start testing everything now with my latency tool and we'll see what kind of results we get and I can show you guys um, and then we'll talk about visibility as well. Yeah, one last thing and I'm sorry for ranting on about different hardware. At the end of the day, guys, see what my tests are at the end of the video and then whatever your hardware is, if it's medium end build or a worse end build, doesn't matter regardless. The biggest thing in this game engine as far as it comes to latency is the frames right so but at least you guys are going to be able to how, how it's see how it's going to scale on really good um really good hardware all right guys let's get stuck in with the results i've just gone ahead and spent a few hours testing everything it was really tedious because i had to get in the same map in the same mode and in the same area um it was very very difficult but before i show you guys the results i need to talk about if you've got a low end build or a medium end build you might want to set the game in normal priority when you launch the game, for some reason, just like Modern Warfare did, it forces high priority for the game. Now, I've tested latency, a normal and high, um, and it's pretty much the same. But if you have a lower end build or medium end build, you may suffer from really, or well, this game will give you already high CPU usage. And then your mouse might feel a little bit stuttery and laggy. laggy. So setting it into normal priority could really help you guys out there if you're on a low end or medium end build. And I'll just show you by default, this game is in high priority um, and that was a big issue with modern warfare a lot of people had to set it to normal now here's the issue you can go ahead and set it to normal you could just go to task manager you can go here to um, uh, go to details and you could set vanguard.exe to normal but as soon as you restart the game 
again, you'll have to do the same thing again, which a little bit gets a little bit frustrating. I tried the registry key value, it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to be deleting that. What I will provide is my config, these settings that I have gone ahead and tested, um, as we'll see here soon. And I'll be providing a little bat file to get the game to launch as normal priority. And I'll show you guys how that works. It's exactly the same script that I made for Modern Warfare. Basically, the only thing that you guys will probably have to change is this line of code right here. So you can just go ahead and edit it with a normal text pad. You'll have to find the Vanguard Launcher XE. Yours may, may likely be in C drive, so you'll have to go ahead and change that. You won't have to change this line. This just is a little bit of a timeout and then it just sort of runs and as soon as the game launches after about 60 seconds it's going to change the priority to normal and you can use that to actually launch the game and you'll see what i mean in a minute so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to run this here okay and it should boot up battle.net okay and you'll see the timer is counting down and i had to do it this way because the game has to be launched before you change priority okay so then we boot the game this gives us plenty of time so we boot the game and we wait okay so the game's booted it's still uh counting down we'll go straight here We'll go to go to details. Oh, I'll just I can't find it. We'll just go straight here. All right. See how the priority is still high. As soon as the countdown is finished, you'll see it go straight into normal. Okay, it's still counting down now. Seven seconds to go. It's still in high. Just wait a little bit longer. And then boom. So that's by the time you would have got it in a match easy enough and see how it's a normal priority. So you can actually use that to launch the game. It may help you guys with uh, medium men to low end builds, especially if you're getting some sort of a mouse lag. Um, I just thought I'd want to point that out because that's kind of a big deal. All right, I guess what we'll start with, we'll start with visibility here. Um, and it gets really complicated because there's not a lot to the game that actually helps visibility, especially with the force anti-aliasing on. It took me quite a long time. So here's, um, and I, I apologize if you guys need to pause the video or, or uh, browse in. I can't do this in full screen uh, currently. So um, this is uh, lowest 720p, okay? Um, and then this is lowest 1080p. So obviously 1080p native is gonna look a lot clearer. This is lowest 1440p. Now hear me out here. It's not going to look as good here as if you had an actual native 1440p monitor. Honestly, resolution makes things so much clearer, especially from a distance. So regardless of your, your scaling settings, if you actually have the 1440p monitor or the 4K monitor, visibility is going to be miles better. It's just how it is. Okay. So obviously I had to use the, the render scale for the resolution and this is 4K resolution. So it gets really tricky with, um, as you can see, the GPU usage gets up to 99% there. Even in two, uh, even in 4K, sorry, even in 1440p, it's at 99% GPU usage. My GPU, um, it, this game really, really rings out uh, your graphics cards. So you have to be in lowest uh, 720p for GPU usage to actually be low. And this is like one of the best cards you can get for this this specific game. So this is a really GPU heavy game, and I can't stress this enough. If you guys really want more frames, a better graphics card would help, or maybe overclocking your graphics card, you can look at my optimization pack. I've got a bit of a guide on how to do that. Just bump it up just a little bit. You don't have to go too crazy. It's going to help a lot because of how GPU bound this game is. You might find that you could overclock your RAM and CPU and there'll be no difference in this game because it's so GPU heavy. It's just how it is. Let's continue on. So definitely native resolution, guys, even though the resolution really affects the frames, um, you know, but it's, it's all going to depend on you. Now back to the OS 1080p, as you can see here. Um, and then this is filming SMAA two times. So like I was saying before, it gets rid of visual noise uh, quite a bit, but the problem is it makes it quite a lot more blurrier. So my recommendation, and I'll give you guys recommendations at the end, is probably going to be using the lowest anti-aliasing setting. Even though there is visual noise, the image is quite a little bit clearer and it's easier to see enemies, even though there is annoying visual noise. Uh, I just wish we could turn anti-aliasing off, but we can't. All right, so now we've gone back to the um, Filmic SMA uh, turned off and just the we've just got um, SMAA on. Uh, just basically the first anti-aliasing setting, right? Like the lowest, this is textures high. This has helped quite a little bit. You guys might not be able to see it on the video, but I definitely recommend it considering cranking up textures and it doesn't affect frames too much. All right. Um, we'll get 348 there and 345. Obviously it'll depend, depend on your graphics card, but even in general, genu um, even in general, you'll find, uh, especially with uh, this, this engine cranking up, your textures just a little bit isn't going to hurt. It's going to help more than hurt. Um, and then you've got anisotropic filtering. Now, 
I'd recommend turning this all the way up, which is 16 times. Um, this never ever affects frames and you can actually see a lot better. So look at the ground on the bottom right side of the screen. Okay, that's with it off. Uh, that's with it like um, at the lowest, which is one times. And this is at the highest at 16 times. See how the ground's a lot more clearer? Yeah, definitely you want to have that at high uh, regardless. Particle quality high. I'm not really seeing a difference here. I remember in Modern Warfare, you kind of wanted to have that turned off up, but I wouldn't bother. Particle resolution. Um, hi, I'm not really seeing it's like like I said guys, there's gonna be lots of stuff here I don't see too much of a difference with. Um, and then we have plus so I've had to I'm so sorry guys. This is with the sharpening filter on and I've had to stack them on top of each other because it would just take too long to do the test otherwise. So if you guys need to pause the video or whatever, do what you gotta do. Book impact and sprays. I just have them off anyway, but they're on and obviously there's not gonna be a visual difference unless you shoot a wall. Um, the tessellation, okay, so tessellation can help the ground look a little bit clearer, but in my opinion, it makes uh, the enemies, uh, like, it's more distracting, or well, you want to look at the enemies, you don't want to be looking at the ground, so nearby, you might see a bit of a change in the ground, and on, that was the same with Modern Warfare, um, I'd recommend having that off, but we'll talk about the, the settings at the end. Level of detail high, definitely, this is one that you want to turn up, um, that's going to help um, quite a little bit for visibility. Um, and then you've got distance quality high. This as well, I'd recommend turning up to. It doesn't affect frames too much, like a little bit, but not too much. Um, now ignore the one percents there. I didn't reset. So if you see some with really low, one, 0 0.1 low percents, I didn't reset the thing before I took the photo. So I apologize about that. Uh, now we, what have we got here? Um, we have volumetric uh, quality level uh, high. I just maybe lighting looks a little it just no no i just think and it ta would tax frames just a little bit too didn't look like it tax frames in my card but I, I wouldn't have that setting on shadow map res extra we lost a few frames here i wouldn't be having this on at all this doesn't help the visual quality uh sun shadow cascades medium um same thing again now we have cache spot shadows on we're starting to lose some frames here by turning some of this stuff up um, none of this is really helping, um, you know, the cache spot shadows, I'll talk about that soon. You, you want that on with another setting, but we'll talk about that soon. A spot cache size high, wouldn't bother. Um, and you might have seen when we've got to the sun shadows, now we have these really annoying little rays in the way. Yeah, we definitely don't want that on. That's the other one, cache sun shadows we're going to want to have on regardless. Um, so the cache spot shadows and the cache sun shadows, you want to have those on because they help frames quite a bit, especially in Warzone, they helped in certain areas like downtown and stuff. Um, spot shadow quality high, it's not really helping anything, like it's just making some slight visual changes for, for nothing, really. Particle quality, particle lighting ultra, it's affected our frames here, it doesn't look any better, I wouldn't bother with this. And ambient, ambient occlusion, same thing again. Uh, yeah, that, that just made it even worse in my opinion, the visibility. So, and GTAO Ultra. Okay, so this is this is this is like this one to tank the frames quite a little bit. I definitely wouldn't be having this on. So, screen space reflection high. Once again, it's just going to be really distracting, and you might find it really grainy on the uh, ground there, here and there. Um, that's just it makes it look horrible. Um, and then. It, that grain goes away when you turn the the max anti-aliasing setting on. Uh, it goes away completely. But like I said, with visibility, I, I recommend having it at the lowest anti-aliasing setting. So, and then on-demand texture streaming, which didn't help my frames. Um, by yeah, it just didn't really do anything. So, I mean, you can always have a little bit of variation here because I might have had to rejoin the match. You guys need to take that into consideration. So let's continue on. Did does field of view affect FPS? Um, and that's uh, kind of a hard question to answer because so here's 120 field of view about 365 so we look at the average 354 um, 60 field of view 373 so quite a little boost in frames I guess there's uh, less pixels to render but it gets to a point where you can't play this game on 60 field of view it's just ridiculous um, so then I did 100 field of view average 352 um, and then it was kind of the same as 120 so and I tried 80 feet of view, 364, um, and it was just 354. So, I mean, it's hard to say with this test because you kind of want to do more tests, but maybe, maybe I'm just saying that field of view does affect frames a little bit. And if you're okay with bumping it down to like 80 to 100 or whatever, might be worth it if you have a really low end rig. 
um, but 120 is just too good in my opinion because you can see enemies if they're coming at you from the side. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're on a medium to low embed, I'd probably suggest 80 field of view because that might help you just a little bit because there's less pixels to actually render on your screen, could give you a little bit of a boost. So well, that is interesting. So anyway, what are we up to here? Lowest 720p. No, we've just looped back. So now it's time to get onto the latency tests, the actual results, the actually exciting stuff. Now I was gonna kind of compile it for you guys in like a, a screen, but I just thought it'd be easier. I got to a stage where it was too hard for me to keep rejoining a match um, and get the same match in the same mode, with the same amount of plays. It was very, very frustrating. So I just kind of compiled the results. I, I'm sorry, I may have said that I was gonna test each individual result, but there's really not a point with this engine because with this engine, the way it works is GPU usage affects frames, oh, sorry, GPU usage affects latency heavily. Okay, that's why if you have an NVIDIA card, you want ultra low latency mode like turned on plus boost because most of you guys are going to be at 99% GPU usage with this game. Um, and um, also frames affect uh, latency a lot more so than other titles, like more so than other titles and you see this now. Now this is probably the best results that you're going to see and this is probably not what it's going to be like 100% of the time in a match, uh, even for me, because the frames do dip down. It's just how the game is. But as you can see at about almost 400 frames here, um, it's 720p, all those settings, it's 20 milliseconds average latency, roughly give or take um, the best case scenario, but you can't play like that because the game looks like a potato. 1080p, you'll see our GPU usage go up to 99%. Um, and uh, you know our frame rate's gone down not too much because this is a very very good card but our latency has gone up a little bit about 21.5 um, you got to look at the average here guys uh, lowest 1080p um, now this is when it gets kind of everything goes south even for a really good graphics card um, the higher resolution more pixels more stress on the graphics card the latency starts to come up quite a little bit so it's gone up by a couple of milliseconds here we're at almost like a 23.5 and then um, I'm sorry, I can only do 50 averages. I just, it was really hard to do these tests. I'm just, just saying. Um, and here's where it kind of like shit hits the fan. And that could also not just be because of the GPU usage, but because of the frames, we're only getting about 200 frames here. In this, um, it's like 30.5 milliseconds latency. So it's gone up quite a lot. That's to be expected with 4K. Now here's the thing, uh, NVIDIA uh, ultra low latency mode or the reflex mode on plus boost in the game. You don't need to set it in the driver. You set it in the game. It overrides the driver settings anyway. Um, this would help. And you guys want to have it on anyway. I was curious to test a Radeon anti-lag. And here's where it got interesting because my PC started crashing as soon as I turned this on. Now, I said before, I wouldn't really recommend it if you're not at 99% GPU usage. But I wanted to test if it actually did anything. And more so, I didn't want to test this in lower resolutions. I wanted to test this in the highest resolution because it's when it's going to work really well is when the GPU is completely pegged. And the GPU is completely pegged here. We're in 4K. Even though we're in low settings, we're in 4K and the GPU is like at max, max usage. As you can see, it helped a little bit, but not much. So 30.5 average, roughly give or take, and then 29.8 or 29.9. It helped a little bit, to the, but not to the point where it's... I feel like the NVIDIA's implementation is a lot better when it comes to this from, from my tests in the past, from what I've seen. And I did test Modern Warfare on stream the other night and it did help by like two milliseconds max. Um, it's not really worth having on, especially if you're going to have crashes with it. And I didn't actually get to play the game to see if it felt laggy. But I mean, if you are playing this game in 4K, throw it on. If you're getting the same frames and the game still feels smooth, great, leave it on. Like I said, I had some crashing issues with it. It was a bit of a nightmare, but I managed to get in to do the test. So that was nice. Um, a little bit finicky. That was weird. Anyway, so back to lowest 1080p, about 20 milliseconds average latency. Okay. Um, where are we here? What did I change here? I apologize. Oh, I didn't have the, um, the overlays on for you guys to see the frames. Medium 1080p. So I just did preset modes. I'm sorry I didn't do each individual setting. Um, here's where it, once again, it kind of changes GPU usage and frames as you'll see. So, you know, we've got 22 milliseconds with medium. So it's got, latency's gone up a bit. And then ultra, um, it didn't affect that much, but that's probably because of my graphics card. Um, 
but I thought you might find that interesting, those tests. So I kind of, I'm sorry, really sorry. I had to compile it. But at the end of the day, I didn't want to go in depth with each individual setting because each individual setting, there's not one setting that makes a ridiculously huge difference. It's basically a combined bunch of settings and mainly a resolution that sort of really matter at the end of the day. And um, so they're the results there. Now, here's where it gets interesting. And like I said, just to prove to you guys how much frames make a difference here in this game. I did 1080p lowest 200 FPS. Okay, so let's go back to 1080p. Okay, lowest 1080p is about 20.5 millisecond. Okay, lowest 1080p capped at 200 FPS and went up to 28.1 millisecond. So that's like the latency went up quite a lot. Um, and more so, um, that's not as much as another game engine. That's like a lot more than it would in another game engine going from you know, an average of 400 frames to 200 frames. Now here's where it gets even worse. 100 FPS, latency's gone up, you know. Uh, capped at 200 was 28.1, capped at 100 was 41 milliseconds. So um, there's a lot of input lag with this game if you've got low frame rates, like a lot. So I just thought you guys might find that interesting. Anyway, so that's kind of what I have to say. Um, basically, get your game uh, to the point where you can actually like, see enemies, but to crank everything down low so you can actually um, have the highest frame rate possible, especially with your system. And guys with really potato NPCs, you're going to probably really want to just bump down the res and bump down the um, graphic settings, even though you might not be able to see that well because, uh, as you can see, the latency difference here, how this game scales with GPU usage and, um, and how this game scales with uh, FPS is, is huge. Um, absolutely huge, more so than other games. Anyway, I'm going to jump into the game now for you guys. I'm going to show you my recommended graphic settings for visibility to the point where it doesn't affect frames too much because uh, you want kind of a competitive edge. You want the max frames, but you also want to be able to see the people that you're actually shooting at. So like I said before, camera moving at 50. Field of view 120 if you've got a medium to high NPC. If you've got a low end PC, consider bumping this down to around about 80 or so. It might help you a little bit. Okay, quality. So I recommend completely custom here. Native because you're going to be able to see better, but if you're on a low-end rig, you might want to bump this down to 66% render res uh, resolution because you'll get lower GPU usage. And the frames will go up a lot, especially with this engine. Texture res medium, anisotropic high, particle quality medium. I'd recommend just setting those. Everything else on low, apart from level of detail, they've duplicated this, I don't know why, and level of distance, quality high. Try to go, um, I really recommend these on high. They do affect frames a little bit, but it's going to help visibility a lot with this game engine. Everything else on low, apart from cache spot shadows, cache sun shadows, they're going to help frames sort of the more that you play. So say you play one map, you might get like this frame, you play the map again because they're kind of like, you know, um, they're basically like stored into the PC somewhere on your hard drive to speed up. Oh, I mean, it just says here what it actually does. Just turn those on. You want these on. You've always wanted those on in MW and, and Warzone. So just turn those on. Everything else on low and off. Now, where it gets interesting, Filmic strength on one, it's supposed to help visual noise, but it seems to only help visual noise on filmic SMAA. SMAA to um, T2X, just have it on that. Even though there is some visual noise, it's still easy to see enemies because that's what we kind of want to see here. And it's also less taxing on the GPU, so I really recommend that. As far as display options, not much to change here. Realistically, I kind of want to play unlimited. Um, but if you've got a really kind of jittery, unstable experience, try to cap it to the highest stable limit. Um, it's a hard one because of how much frames affect latency on this game, but it is what it is. Video reflex low latency, turn that to um, enable plus boost. There's no point, I don't even know what this option is here for me because I have an AMD card. Um, and also on demand texture streaming, just turn it off because you're not going to be running, um, you know, absolute. Um, ultra ultra textures it's not going to really help you that much probably more help you with 4k just turn it off anyway i didn't really see a difference regardless um and that's the only options that i would recommend and go from there so i recommend those and if you're really struggling you're going to have to bump down the render resolution or you're going to have to overclock your card or get a better card it's just how it is with this game so that pretty much covers just about everything got a couple more things to talk about so you know, depending on your hardware, you're going to benefit from kind of different settings, but you've seen how it scales and it should scale similarly, but more aggressively if you have a medium to low end build. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, just change the settings that give you the most stable FPS um, because especially with this game, more frames is lower latency, like by a mile. Um, I want to talk about drivers. You just go on the latest because it's a beta and they've um, included this game in the latest drivers. 
Don't bother going on older ones. You're going to have bugs and glitches and issues. So you guys, that's everything. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it helped you. Sorry it went so long. Um, subscribe and like if you like um, this kind of content. I'm going to be doing plenty more for other games that come out. And when this game actually gets released, I'll um, do a video and I'll just uh, do a couple of quick tests and make sure nothing's really changed. And I'd say not much is going to change. If anything, the optimization would just get a little bit better with this game. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later.